think um, significantly shorter ELAM math tests would be um, appropriate. Ideally, one day each. Um, test must be fully transparent. I think that that's a big, obviously, motive in this conversation that we are having. It's, um, it's, it, it, it's an interesting dynamic because you, we are literally giving our children tests in our classroom that we are not allowed to see and then aren't released to the public. So we literally have no idea what the children did for half of the test. And their parents do not know as well and their schools don't know as well. So I think transparency is a big issue for us, 100% transparency on what the test looks like and how it's used. Um, definitely appropriate tests for students with IEPs and English language learners, I think it's very strong. Um, Test should be criterion based. So, so our tests and most tests are North reference. They really do, uh, you know, they are used to sort kids. That is the purpose of a normal reference test to come up with a bell curve. Uh, a criterion reference test, there was a movement maybe 20 years ago to have <laughs> tests that really, there was a standard if you answered all the questions, you know, whatever was determined met the standard, you could have any percentage, you could have 90% of kids meeting standards. You can't on these tests because questions are discarded if too many people get them right. That is how more reference tests are developed. It's a very interesting process to read about. I was actually about 20 years ago on a committee with people from ETS talking about this, and, and that, that is the nature of a normal reference test. It is supposed to sort kids. Um, a criterion-based test says, these are, this is what we want kids to know by the end of fourth grade, and whatever number, whatever percent knows that passes, you would also still be able to exceed that standard and get a four, but that's basically the difference. You've compared it to driver's license. Yeah, I mean, it's like, yes, you can compare it to a driver's license test. There isn't any bell curve there. You're all supposed to know these questions. You pass it if you get those right. They're not, you know, normed in a way so that, you know, because most people get, you know, 10 right out of 12 questions that those, you know, people would not pass the test because they're on the end of a bell curve. 